Hey guys, for today's video I want to talk about how to utilize your players. So you're an in-game leader and you have a group of players on your team. And every team is going to have a different composition in terms of different players fitting different roles. Um, if you need to know about roles, I, I have a video, a thoughts video about all the different player roles. Now what you have to understand is that uh, every in-game leader, so you and I are going to have a different philosophy about actually approaching each individual map. Every map, I might have an idea of how a map should be played and you might have a different idea. And the cool thing about CS is that neither of us are right or wrong. There's good things you can do in each specific philosophy and it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Um, if you have a certain style, you might be good against a certain style but it might be bad against another. So if you have a rock, it's really good at beating scissors, but if we're against paper, it's not gonna work. That's why you need to be able to be dynamic and have a lot of different things in your strat book where if something's not working, you can switch things up. Now, utilizing your players, you need to understand what your team composition is and you know, if you have an opera, is he aggressive or is he passive? If you have riflers, are they mainly a passive set of teams or are you like, do you have a lot of aggressive players? And you have to figure out how you're going to approach doing your default and doing your map control. So if I've got, for example, um, two really aggressive riflers and another, like a third aggressive person, maybe he's an opera, maybe he's a rifler. What I might do is I might just have people buddy up and go and clear things in squads of two and just go and get those entry kills and the trade kills and try to acquire map control that way. Um, if I have an aggressive offer, maybe I'll let him lead in for an aggressive pick with his op, and then once he gets that kill, we can explode on a bomb site off of that pick. If I have a passive offer, generally speaking, a passive offer is good at controlling the map. On a map like Overpass, you don't really need to have an opera sitting anywhere. It's a bit redundant on T-side, so unless your opera is going for picks, maybe it's best to just set him up with an AK and have him just control the map with an AK instead, and then let your rifler players clear everything up close and then do smoke execute strats type of thing on Overpass. But CT side Overpass with an op, it's very good to be a positional opera. There's a, a lot of great positions you can hold, such as bathrooms or highway onto fountain area you could go and get a pick just hold this area down here and just just post up here it's a little bit aggressive I know or you could just have the opera back at long a you could have the opera in a site you can have the opera going uh, towards B and just playing like a turret at B so there's a lot of different things you can do by moving around your your core players into specific positions depending on what type of players they are so you need to understand how your team is going to operate in terms of team composition and you need to know how to utilize your players where to put them what positions they need to be in and how you should be approaching the map so if i've got a player who's not really all that uh good at thinking but his shot is amazing and he's got really crisp movement he's just like an all aim no brain type of player that's what they're commonly referred to as. I'm going to put him in a, an area where I think that he's going to get the most amount of kills and where there's going to be the most amount of action because if there's going to be a, th a showdown happening, people are throwing down, I want him to be there getting those kills. So if I'm doing any push strats, I want that player to be the one who's pushing and, and getting contact with everyone. If I'm going to use my um, smarter players, the positional players, I'm going to put them in the positions where they can solo areas, they can solo bomb sites and wait for rotations because I can trust them that they'll stay alive and they'll be disciplined enough to not to take all the fights that come their way. So you need to understand what kind of goal you're going for and then put the, the players in the right positions. The smart players you put in, in places where they need to make good decisions, stay alive for a long amount of time, um, and buy your team time to rotate. And you put your, your fraggers, the guys who might not be as, as smart but have like excel in, in the aim. Maybe they are really smart players. It's not to say that they're dumb players. It's just that if they're better at aiming and everything like that, then you'll probably want to use them and get all the kills with them. So 
Having said all this, I've wasted about five minutes already talking about a bunch of nothing, utilizing your players. You just need to know what kind of strats you're running and where to put your players. And uh, I'll, I'll give an example. So a default on overpass T side, a good one that you can use is you put one person outside B just to maintain map control. And then you'll send everyone else towards A. One of the ways you could do is you can send a person down here just to control this area, not really fight so much. And then three players over towards fountain clearing and pushing back long and bathrooms. So if you're doing this style of default, what you're going to do is you're going to want to put one of your passive smarter players or a lurker in this position here outside long B because his job here is not to get kills specifically, it's to maintain control of this area. So if the CTs want to push, if they want to get information, find out what you're doing, this player needs to stay alive, get the kill on the CT who's pushing, um, maybe walk out late round to get a kill, maybe walk into short B, find out some information and feed it back to your in-game leader so that you guys know what you should do at B. So his job just is tell him, okay, yeah, they, they're pre-smoking it every round. We can't do a rush because they'll smoke and then they'll spray through the smoke or they'll molly it. Like he feeds them that information and he tries to look for openings, but safe openings, calculated risks. So you need someone who's pretty patient and disciplined in this area because you can't have them just dying every round and forfeiting that control. Same thing over at this doorway here. You're probably going to want to put uh, someone here who has patience to just sit around and wait for everyone else to clear everything. If you put people who don't have patience in these types of places, then what's going to happen is that they're going to push, they're going to peek, they're going to die, they're going to lose this control of the map. And now the, the counter terrorists are going to know exactly where to rotate and where you're going to end up. And they're going to pinch you in and, and box you in and contain you, which isn't good. So that leaves uh, the rest of the players. You're going to probably put your aggressive players who are going to go look for the opening picks. They're going to be the ones, your entry fraggers, coming towards A because this is where you want to take control. You want to take control, obviously, if you have three people going in a certain area, they're going to be the ones taking control of the map. And the people who are left on their own are going to be lurking around, kind of holding the map control. So as you're clearing out through all the bathrooms with your aggressive players, your passive, more disciplined lurker players are going to be holding connector. They're going to be holding outside B. Once you've pushed back all these areas here, and generally speaking, you have um, someone who's like a support type player with this guy, like with these guys clearing out all these uh, places. And you notice how I haven't talked about an opera. Operas can be aggressive or passive. One of the operas could be an entry fragger. It could be the support player. The opera could be the support player who just will come over here. He'll throw a flashbang. A guy will run out here for a pick um, to push up and the opera will just sit here and post on this angle. And when the guys get into the bathrooms, maybe the opera will come back here to party and post on this angle. And he just sits here and, and is a positional opera. So your opera could be a, a support player in, in this type of uh, strategy. And then after you have that map control where you've pushed back highway, you've pushed back this area and maybe even pushed back long, then you can go into your execute where you can do your A strat, your B strat, your smoke uh, like over A and then you fake and go to B or vice versa. On CT side, you're still gonna want you're gonna want to do something similar. So you'll probably want to put uh, what I like to do is my philosophy. I'll put uh, an opera in this position at around A, and I'll put someone to support the opera. So I'll put hopefully my opera is aggressive, and he can go for these opening picks because it's really crucial if you can get these opening picks over at Fountain and just control this area or push up long A, for example, or push into connector. It's really beneficial to have an opera that's not afraid to do that and get you the opening pick and map control but it's important to put someone who's disciplined and a really positional player around to support this opera because this opera is going to be in a, a very dangerous position looking for these opening kills and the player who's going to be playing with them needs to just know how to back him up and bail him out of situations so whether that be holding a flashbang so the opera can take a shot and then you flash and then the opera can fall back. Maybe the, your opera goes down into the connector steps here and he's taking a pick down there. Maybe you're just sitting back here with a rifle and you're just chilling and anyone who pushes down to kill him, you shoot him in the back and then you try to stay alive and get out of here, use your smokes and stuff. And your teammate who's down here, once his position is known, maybe he'll just smoke this off and then exit through B bomb site and then you'll have a teammate rotate to A. So you need to have a guy who's 
able to support your opera in aggressive positions in this regard and then you can put the rest of the people towards B. Generally speaking you're going to want to put people who can um, solo the bomb site you're going to have him as the anchor because he's going to make the right decisions he's going to stay alive longest he's going to be in a good position to make sure that he can get an opening kill and stay alive so that you guys can rotate he's going to manage his grenades properly and you're going to want to put um, everyone in between the people who are just going to be wherever the action is so come here to stop the b rush if there's no b rush and we need him at a he'll rotate a you can put your aggressive players as the rotators because um, because they want to see the action they want to be where the action is but sometimes it's also good to have your your mad fraggers as the anchors in some cer certain situations depending on the team that you're playing against and the map you're playing and how good they are at the spot like they need to be confident in their spot and they need to own it completely so i i hope this explained a little bit about what i mean about utilizing your players and putting them in the correct roles that they need to be in um, if it's a little still just like confusing write it in the comments and i'll try to like address your points but uh, i'm hoping that this kind of gives you an idea of what i mean by putting certain players in certain positions and certain roles and um if it if it did help remember to subscribe and i'll catch you next time all right peace